We recently caught up with John Mahon backstage at Elton John's last Australian concert as part of his Farewell Yellow Brick Road tour. Digital drummer readers got their first insight into the percussionist and vocalist in our 2011 interview. John kindly ran through his rig for us before the show and stressed that the Yamaha DTX 900 module had been the cornerstone of the last three Elton John touring rigs. It's triggered by a collection of Yamaha's three-zone silicon pads, and the module is loaded with custom sounds, including an elaborate three-minute track used in the finale song on the tour. The very last song of the night, there's a huge, long sample of a, of a, of a sound effect, kind of sample of a, a mashup of different Elton songs. Yeah. And that's kind of the last thing that, we, that I play, the last note of the whole show is I hit this sample and it lasts about three minutes this sample so um, takes up a lot of memory but we've figured out a way to make it work um, there's pretty much some kind of little you know like uh, Philadelphia Freedom there's a, a you know an 80s disco tom tom yeah. thing in there that I play so yeah. there's a little bit of something on almost every song it's, and of course you have the pads kind of front and yeah. center anyway so Pretty obvious I mean, that you're playing. I really have the pads front and center because I sing so much, and I, I don't like wearing those lavalier mic things. And I sing I'm, I sing on every song, so that's why the pads. When I first got the gigs, the pads became front and center, and because I was I didn't even have as much acoustic percussion when I first started doing this gig. Mm. A lot of the stuff I was playing, um, there was a lot of loops and stuff on Elton's record, so I was cutting up loops and playing them on the, on the electronics. Yeah. Um, so the pads just kind of stayed there because it, it's like with the pads I can play, like one song I play congas on the pads. So because, because it's easier for me to sing and the sound man wants to really hear the congas cut through, yeah. it's easier to get a better conga sound electronically than it is for him to mic the congas yeah. at our stage volume which is huge. Our stage volume is super, super loud yeah. because Elton uses wedges and he doesn't use in yeah. So um, if the sound man really wants to hear something that's really clear, I will sample it and put it on the pads, right. which has worked out really well for us. I know? mean, the reality is that you could put everything on the pads, but visually, I guess you want, you want to show that yeah, you, visually, you can play other stuff. I mean, it's, it's definitely more fun to play real congas than it is to play them on the pads. Um, you know, just because you get the feel, and, and of course, visually, it is a show. Um, and you know, you could put bell trees and all that other stuff on yeah. there, but uh, I think I, for one song, I used to have a gong, a real gong. I mean, I use a Zildjian wind gong here, but it was a huge gong that yeah. was at the end of one of the songs, which we don't play anymore. But you know, it'd be great if I had a gong and could go, <laughs> but you know. Can't do well, to compete things. with the, uh, yeah. the the visual stuff happening over there with Ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and since when when Ray came back in the band, he plays most of the big orchestral percussion, and I'm I've backed off a little more and focus a lot more on the singing parts. Um, um, and I have a mallet cat that I just play on one song. I'm not a, a mallet master by any means, so I but I've you know figured out how to play it a little right, bit. Right. Yeah, and we use that little pad to change the program, mm -hmm. which is nice. I can just flip around and boink and hit that pad more onto the next song. Because sometimes this setup is not even where I can reach it. Sometimes it's down on another section on our yeah. old stage. But so it's you actually change the patches yourself. You don't have your yeah. I do it myself. Do you? Yeah, I just do it right there with that. Okay. And if something, you know, he's always sitting behind the drums. So if something goes wrong, he can run over here. Because a lot of times we've had cable issues. You know where the maybe the cable came out or yep. maybe it wasn't plugged in all the way we've had some of the pads go bad after shit those well those are the newest yamaha pads but even at newest those are probably going on maybe eight years or something yeah. like that mm -hmm. and they get a pretty good workout i have to say you know i don't i don't baby them at all you know and and most of the time i'm hitting them with with a mallet stick so most of the time I'm, I'm playing them with one of these Vic Firth. They made me these custom mallets. So, yeah. you know, big timbali stick on one side and a really hard felt thing mm -hmm. on the other side. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a spare backup module here with all your samples? Loaded? Well, see, that's a that's a scary part. We don't carry a spare backup like in Australia. We'd have so we'd have a problem. You know, we have to find one of these. You know. 
some of the songs, like for example, when our keyboard player, when he couldn't be here because well, he, he had COVID early on, so I played a couple of his pizzicato string parts on that. So he could probably like play hand claps yeah. on Crocodile Rock and stuff like that. You know, if there was a and some of those really long samples. We have them backed up to a computer, mm -hmm. so he can load them into his rig. So mm -hmm. um, we, we figured out ways to make it work, you know, because really the show, it's, it's about Elton and we're, yeah. I'm just kind of coloring candy, you know. Well, I think you're being a little modest. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the kick drum is funny because Elton wanted me to bring this big bass drum in because he wanted to hear this big bass drum sound yeah. when we were working with Leon Russell. He wanted this big old timey boom of a sound, concert sound. And he goes, do you have one of those bass drums? And I said, yeah, I, I can get one of those. And But the crazy part is- It's a sample. <laughs> we've, I'm sampling, yeah, I sampled the big bass drum sound because it's, you can't hear that at yeah. our stage volume, but yeah. when you sample it, and then you can hear it come through the speakers, yeah. we can turn it up as loud as we yeah. want. So the electronics is has been a lifesaver really for this gig for things we really want to hear things that are important that got to yeah. come out and and it's good because i can carry the weight of other things like if our keyboard player can't just got too much going on yeah. i mean there was a couple songs i even had a few short vocal samples on on i think it was maybe border song or something like that we wanted more of a, a choir kind of a sound that we couldn't really get yeah. um so I would sample Holy Moses, the whole right. sample like that. We all sang it and then we doubled and tripled it so it sounded fat. And uh, I used to play the sample for uh, the Lion King when we did Circle of Life. There's mm -hmm. a, there's an African chant yeah. in the beginning of the song. Yep. Something like Well, I had to cut it up in four because when I tried to play the whole sample, Elton wouldn't do the song the same speed every night. Okay. So some nights he wanted to play it faster. <laughs> so I would go, and, you know, and the sample yeah, would yeah, be yeah. in this tempo. So I thought, ah, I'm going to cut <laughs> it up. And he used to say it up on my pads. Um, he used to say, you know, Ying Wing Yam and Ying Wing because it wasn't easy because I was singing it yeah. and playing it at yeah, the same time. Yeah, yeah. So that was kind of weird. You know. So you, you've had this rig for a long time. Have there been any disasters? I knocked my drink on it one night. It was the worst thing that ever happened. I had an orange juice up here and I knocked it over and it dripped down in there and, and fried it. And that huge rain you're talking about a few years ago when we played it and. <coughs> um, I don't think it was maybe in Hunter Valley or something like that. It was a huge rainstorm. Yeah. Toasted it. Right. It, it fried it because it because we got so wet. Yeah. And you know, I mean, one of the one of the bad parts about this thing is that it sits on a tray like yeah. this. And if I'm super thinking ahead, I would come back here and shove it in. You know, mm -hmm. but that night it was just the rain just mm -hmm. soaked it. So that's the worst thing is is. Uh, We've never had like a, a like a hardware. We've had a couple software glitches where we had to reboot it a couple times, mm -hmm. and but like we've never had a memory chip problem or anything like that. So it's been, and worst worst case scenario, you've got plenty of other stuff to hit anyway. I got plenty of other stuff to hit. Yeah, yeah. You know the the samples. I mean, I'm I do a lot of really weird like beginning of Benny and the Jets has a crowd noise with a whistle. It's on the record if you hear it. Mm. And we always wanted to use that. And then one day I thought, I'm just going to figure out how to. So I found some crowd noise. I taped some crowd noise. And then I got one of the guys, Elton's wardrobe person, who's got a great whistle. It's like, you know, like a really loud. So I went into, you know, my computer and, you know, with, with music software. And I figured out a way to get all these, put all this together. And I made this big, long sample of crowd and whistle. Yeah. And it's one of the first things I play before the show starts. Yeah. I hit it on the pad because Benny and the Jets has foot stomps. If you listen to the records, it's mm -hmm. got this kind of foot stompy thing, and it's got a uh, big hand clap and a big stomp boom. So mm -hmm. most of my pads are filled up, so I even had to put like the the applause on the rim for that. Mm -hmm. So um, it's an interesting way to do it, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, not I don't think many. I mean, I know plenty of other percussion players, but most of them. 
I don't think are using the samples like I am. Yeah. Most of them are there. You know, the drummers playing on a, on a yeah. side pad or mm -hmm. something SPDs like that. Or something Most like of my samples are kind of like more part of the show as opposed mm -hmm. to a percussion part. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. The band I have now is probably my favorite because, wow, every time I come on stage, they just seem to get better and better and better. So I'm going to introduce them one by one, and you're going to give them a big Brisbane roar, okay? On the right hand side of the stage on percussion and vocals, John Mayhawk! And on a personal note, are you going to miss this? Absolutely. I mean, really, wow. This is my 26th year yeah. without me, so uh, yeah, I'm going to definitely miss it. I'm going to definitely miss it, but uh, you and know, I've got other things going on and find some, do some more, a lot more recording work and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, Just give you a chance to get out there. I have a lot of gear I'm going to have to figure out what to do with. <laughs> <laughs> but emotionally, it must be difficult because there are so many last concerts. Yeah. You know, the last. Yeah, like this is the tonight the last, is the last concert in Australia. Yeah. Ever. So that's kind of weird, really, when I think yeah. about that. So yeah, it's been very bittersweet. Like we played Dodger Stadium, and yeah. that was the last one, and uh, very bittersweet, the last show in the United States. Yeah. Incredible without, audience reaction, though, incredible, and incredible man. critical review. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Right. But uh, no, I've been very happy. I mean, Yamaha, they've been like so good with me and you know if something breaks and, and I have to say the thing is a workhorse you know yeah. I don't know about the other I've always only had this 900 yeah and I'm not even sure if they still make it so no they don't are they pressuring you to try the new stuff the ETX Pro they well it's not like they're pressuring me but they say you know we've got this but you know if, if I knew the tour was going to keep on going I would definitely upgrade and go to the new stuff yeah. but at this point, for us to change all the samples... That's right, because it's not just plug and play for it's you. It's not just so, plug and play. Yeah. It's, uh, you'd, you'd have to reload all the samples yeah. in. I have pretty much every song that Elton's ever done with us yeah. Yeah. in here. Yeah. So the thing is a monster. I mean, it's got a lot of banks. Yeah. It, it's not the easiest thing to program, but it's very similar to programming a motif keyboard. Yeah. So once you figure out the architecture, um, it works a lot better. We used to look, we still have the plastic on the screen on this one, <laughs> but it's dirty because this, this is one of my oldest ones. Right. It doesn't waterproof it, unfortunately. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. But, um, All right. No, that's great. Thank you very yeah. much for that. Oh, you're welcome.